It is now Friday. You gotta say, though, this week went by pretty quick. I mean, I guess if you really want to look at it from, you know, a moving fast perspective, pretty much every video that I've done this week has had, well, some sort of, you know, a significant purpose, particularly the one I did on Monday, which... Honestly, that was a good vi I mean, I, I mean, technically, again, I kind of came up with the idea for that kind of video on the fly, if you want to be technical about it. But, again, considering that, you know, 400 days of doing this is kind of a milestone, you know, I figured, you know, why not? Just like I can say, happy Friday, everybody. Yep, we're, again, we are at Friday. And less than a month, I presume, until Rita's opens. I am so excited for that. Oh, man. I love Rita's. I can't wait for it to open. But, we have to be patient. We still have a few weeks to go. And, speaking of how much time is left, I gotta say, we've been pretty blessed with, um... Just how better, how much better the weather was compared to, you know, a year ago. Because, I mean, don't get me wrong, we've had some cold spells. I've personally complained about said cold spells. But the cold spells we've had around the beginning of this year lasted a couple days. Like, maybe five days at most. Whereas a year ago, like... It was constantly like either, de well, it was definitely below freezing, but it was like that for you know several weeks on end. So, I'll take sporadic cold over consistent cold any, well, I guess any day of the week, because that's technically how, technically how it works. It would be little days of the week. Um, so, yeah, first Weekend with no NFL. I'm sad. I mean, I guess I could sort of. I mean, I really have been meaning to branch out into watching more sports. Probably, I mean, I know it's a little early to really call it, but, you know, March Madness is, you know, coming up just a little over a month from now. It's weird. March Madness obviously, you know, obviously takes place in March, but you would think a big tournament like that would take place like in the very beginning of March as opposed to what can only be prescri presumed as St. Patrick's Day weekend which again St. Patrick's Day is on a Sunday so yeah that's when it would start although there is one good thing about St. Patrick's Day being on a Sunday because you know let's be honest St. Patrick's Day it's a it's an excuse for us to get in touch with your Irish heritage, whether you have it or not. And, you know, people, adults, you know, they tend to, you know, have a little too much fun. But, honestly, with the fact that St. Patrick's Day this year is on a Sunday, you know, there's no really, no real need to worry about that at all. Because it's, you know, Sunday. Huh. Therefore, if you did do, go have any fun, you would really regret the next day because, you know, I mean, I've said Mondays are, are a drag already, and, you know, I've been completely clean and sober every single Monday I've been doing these videos. So imagine how worse it'll be if you went out partying on a Sunday night. That'd be, that'd be pretty bad. I mean, I guess if you want to also be technical, some people do go out drinking on Sunday night when it's like, again, during football season, but... You know, that was always a real pro. I mean, don't get me wrong, I love Sunday night football, though, Thursday night, Monday night, all that stuff. And that's never going to change. But if your favorite team is on one of those night games and you want to watch to the very end, you're risking staying up until midnight. And regardless of what day you are watching it, the next day is going to be pretty long and, and arduous. I'll put it to you that way. But, yeah, football season's over. Nothing, 
Nothing really can do about that. No more NFL picks. I really miss doing those. I miss doing them already. But hey, if not that I, not that I personally was keeping score myself throughout the entirety of the season, but if anyone actually was keeping score at home, at least I can say my final pick was a high note cuz I did pick the Patriots to win. I mean, I got the score wrong, completely wrong, but I'm pretty sure everybody else did too cuz everyone was thinking it was going to be like like a high scoring game like 50 plus points scored all together um you know you know offense is going to completely take over or you know defense was going to go through a struggle the entire game but no it turned out to be the exact opposite and that's why people are complaining about the Super Bowl game as a whole I mean they are expecting excitement. You know, you have Tom Brady going for his, at the time, potential sixth ring. And you have the Rams, who were the number one scoring, well, technically number two, but since they were the last team there, one of the last two teams there, by default, they were the number one scoring offense. So you were expecting something really exciting. It turned out to be essentially a defensive slugfest, which... And a lot of people were really upset by that because, oh, you know, it's only exciting when they score. And so, like, really? Because if there's one thing I've learned by watching, believe it or not, stuff like horror movies, it's what you don't see or what doesn't happen that can get you. You know, I was on the edge of my seat the entirety of the game thinking something is going to tip the scale in the favor of whoever. That's ultimately why I really don't have a problem with how the Super Bowl turned out. Even though a lot of people saying that, you know, they are. Would I like to have seen, like, a high-scoring game with, you know, a potential game-winning drive by Tom Brady? Sure. Although, technically, we did get a game-winning drive by Tom Brady. It just wasn't at the very end like a lot of people would have predicted. Actually... Well, it was the beginning of the end. It was around, like, the third, fourth quarter. So, definitely second half. There's definitely that. But, yeah. At, uh... I'm talking about football way too much, but I know for... I really should... I'm going through football withdrawal. That's what it is. And, hey, I just, I just came up with a title for today's video. What do you know? Um... So, with that said, again, I probably could be watching other sports as well, you know. You know, basketball is always really good, especially if anyone's been paying attention at all, the whole Anthony Davis thing going on. That's pretty big. And, you know, hockey. You know, i got to show my attorney, Pauling Brothers, some more love, even more than probably I already have, and getting to watching that because... Again, back when I was at Trinity Pauling, hockey was hockey was pretty big. Like, don't and again, don't get me wrong. You know, basketball definitely had its place. Wrestling, which is what I went for, that had its place. Squash, which honestly I had no idea what squash was, but honestly, after you know watching a little bit of it, I'm like, hmm, this is quite interesting. But yeah, you know that pretty much every winter sport had its place. And that's not even including some of the activities that you could have done on, like, your days off at Trinity Pauling or whatever. Seriously, the one thing I never did that I wish I... Well, to be fair, though, I, it was really cold and I wanted to stay in and stay warm. It's that, believe it or not, they actually had, um... Well, again, Trinity Pauling is a really hilly area. In fact, it's on top of the hill and where there's snow, there's got to be sledding. And I never went sledding there. That, that was one thing I never did. But then again, though, seeing as how pretty much everybody else did, I'm sure the hill was probably completely destroyed by the time it was over. And I know exactly what hill I would have sled down on because as somebody ran across the country for Trinity Pauling, I ran up probably every possible hill there is on that campus. Unless there was a secret one that I never knew about. Seriously, this day I could literally close my eyes and visualize the course 
from start to finish, at least back when I was there. In fact, I'm actually I'm actually doing that right now. That's why my eyes are closed. Okay, I'm going to open them now. I mean, it is essentially two laps, and while they are different all together, the ending is exactly, you know, the same. You still have to go up the worst hill on campus, which I do recall was known as Star Hill. Although, from what, I, from what I've seen now, they have it so... Now, when you run up the course, you sort of have to, like, zigzag up it or whatever. Whereas, back in my day, you had to just run it straight up, which was a gigantic pain. Although, it was a great way for you to pass people who were sort of, you know, dogging it. That was, that was really cool. Not to mention... The final 1,000 meters was technically downhill and flat, which is awesome. You wanted to... You theoretically could do your kick and you'd be... You'd be golden. Oh, sorry. Uh, a kick is basically whenever you see a race and you see like that last second sprint trying to pass someone, make it to the finish line, that's what's called a kick. And, you know, if two people are going through a kick, there's no shame if you you know, are the one who loses that because you are technically leaving it all on the course and possibly off of the course if for whatever reason you feel sick afterwards. That was actually one thing I was blessed by was that I was never that sick after working out where I was immediately, you know, feeling not well. I actually got pretty lucky with that. But then, then again, I took pretty de- I mean, I'm always taking good care of myself. I've never, never questioned that. But there are times I really, really took care of myself. Like, um, back at Horseheads when I played football, and uh, we had two-a-day sessions, like, all I would have for lunch was, like, a BLT and with no mayo and water. And that was my lunch for the day. Which, you know... It, got the essential vitamins and nutrients and protein, which is nice. Although, I once said that out loud and my old football coach, who is actually one of the 16 of the right, but right now I'm too lazy to show you which one, is like, you a health nut or something? It was actually kind of funny because since I was a lineman and therefore one of the bigger guys, it is kind of unheard of for them, for a lineman to actually try and eat, you know, healthy, at least in high school. And, like, college are the pros, you know, who actually want to go far in playing football. They actually do care about their diet. But while I did care about my diet and while I did care for, you know, playing well, you know, I definitely indulged a lot more than I should have. Yeah, you live and you learn. Then again, I suppose if I redid it all over again, I probably would have done it in a different position. I'd still be a lineman. I probably just would have been like a center. Because, honestly, I really was good at calling out defensive plays and what the defense was going to do. I just never really thought I could do it. Though, then again, for those of you who are in the know, football at Horseheads had a lot of problems. And... The vast majority of linemen being out of shape was definitely one of them. Not me. I actually tried staying in shape, but there were a few too many. Then again, we had a lot of problems. Not that I need to go into further detail or, or discuss that or whatever. Another reason how I became a health nut was, um, you know, at Journey Pauling, <clears throat> doing cross country, you know, it's just, you know, having a good diet. Like, on really hard speed workout days, you know, get yourself some protein. You know, on, you know, easy sort of long days, get yourself like a salad and, you know, some carbs, which I did. But I really had no idea how good I was doing it because there were times where, you know, after, you know, on the way back, we actually did get to stop at McDonald's and I would feel sick after having it. Like, seriously, feeling sick after... You felt sick after McDonald's? That's never happened in the history of mankind. I know, right? Oh, well. For the record, 
Actually, when was the last time I had McDonald's? Seriously, McDonald's is like the most popular fast food franchise there is. And for the life of me, I can't remember the last time I had it. I should probably fix that. What if it's any good still? I'm sure it probably is, considering I see a commercial about every... At least one commercial about every day. And... Seeing as how it's not quite Lent yet, I could actually get myself a burger there. That reminds... That also reminds me, guys. You have literally one month until... If, well, for those of you who practice the Christian Catholic faith, you have literally one month until Lent starts and then you're no longer able to have... Actually, less than a month. And so you're no longer able to have meat on Fridays until late April. So, get your fix in now, and then when Lent starts on March 6th, no, you can't do that until, again, late April. So, get your fix in now. And that's your, that's the PSA about that for the week. And I should probably get going because, honestly... You know, it's Friday and I want to get my weekend started soon, but I do have work to do. Although, considering that I saw, considering how awesome, like, yesterday's episode of Hot Ones was with Seth Meyers, I am definitely going to take some time to watch that again. So, like, favorite, share, and hit the subscribe button. I can really use the support on YouTube. Follow me on the social media platforms, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Tumblr. <sighs> As always, I am very humbled I made this video for all of you guys to watch and enjoy for today. I'm hopeful that we all have a wonderful, wonderful Thursday, Friday. Happy Friday, everybody. Why did I say Thursday? Wow. And remember, if you guys are on a talker chat, I'm always going to be here to lend an ear. And I'll always have your back. Take care and make good choices, everybody.